Welcome to the Monty Locomotive Works. My name is Jay Monty, and uh, this uh, brief tutorial will be uh, about how to set the valves on a steam engine, uh, in, in particular this locomotive with uh, wall shards valve gear. And uh, I thought this would be a useful video for uh, those of you in the live steam community. Um, I know I, I travel around to various clubs and meets, and um, it's a question I get asked, uh, you know, fairly often is, is how to set the valves. And um, it's also a problem I see uh, folks have engines that maybe they inherited from someone else and um, you know, the valves may not be set correctly or maybe the engine has been rebuilt and the valves need to be reset. And um, you know, it's an important part of uh, maintaining the performance of the engine is to make sure the valves are set so that the engine runs smooth and square. So I uh, hope you enjoy this uh, tutorial and um, we'll get going. So this locomotive here in front of us uh, was built uh, by myself. I finished it about uh, three years ago, and it's of a Charlie Purinton design. And uh, it's run probably a few hundred miles. Uh, it's quite the runner, and um, over the time it developed some uh, wear on the valve gear. In the last month and a half, I've spent um, rebushing the valve gear. Um, as a result, we have to time the valves, and this locomotive has Walshart's valve gear with uh, slide valves, and there's really three components to timing the valves. Those are setting the dead center of the wheels and then timing the eccentric rod here in the crank and setting the valve on the valve stem um, in here. So we'll start with uh, setting the dead centers and as, as you can see I have fixed a, uh, a pointer here on the frame of the locomotive and what that's going to allow me to do is to make marks on the uh, tire of the wheel and we'll be able to set our dead centers there and, and reference those as we set the valves. So the first thing to do in setting the dead centers is to determine the extent of motion of the crossheads. And what you'll do, you'll sort of uh, move the engine back and forth and you'll sort of take a guess at where, you, where the dead center is. And what you'll see is there's a small range of motion in the wheels where the crosshead doesn't move. It's maybe 5 or 10 degrees rotation of the wheel. And so we'll get into that zone there. And we, we've ter determined that the crosshead is, say, all the way forward in this case. We're going to scribe a mark on the guide to show us that's the extent of the crosshead movement. So now that we have our mark on the crosshead guide, we're going to uh, next mark the wheel tire at the point where the crosshead begins to move as you rotate the wheels. So assuming we're roughly on dead center now, we are going to slowly move the locomotive just until that scribe mark gets covered up. And we'll come over here and where our pointer is, which is difficult to see at the moment, we're going to make a mark on the tread. Now we just did that in the forward direction and now we're going to do it in the reverse direction. So we're going to now reverse the locomotive and again as the crosshead just starts to move back, we're going to make another mark here on the tread of the wheel. So this distance between the two marks is the amount of rotation where there's no movement in the piston or crosshead. Now to find the dead center is pretty simple. You just pick the point between these two marks and we can just eyeball it even and you set your mark right there. Now when the pointer is lined up with that mark, that is our dead center. And so you'll do this on both sides You'll do this for the top dead center, which we're on now, and then you'll do this again for the bottom dead center over here. So now that we have the dead centers marked on the wheel, the next thing we can do is set the eccentric crank. And there's one key concept to understand about the eccentric crank, and that is that the point at which the eccentric rod attaches to the crank is 90 degrees of rotation from the crank pin. And you can kind of see this illustrated here if we take a straight edge and we put it in the vertical plane of the wheel. So 
um, across the axle and down to the top and bottom of the wheel, you'll see the crank pin is lying in the vertical plane. And then if we turn the straight edge sideways and lay it on the horizontal plane between the two uh, centers of the axle, you'll see how the um, pin on the eccentric crank lines up right in that plane. So that's our 90 degrees. So the next question then is how do you create the 90 degree offset on the crank? Um, and the easiest way to do this is to roll the engine back onto dead center. And you'll see now the crank is uh, at the bottom and at mid-stroke. And at mid-stroke, if we have set this correctly, when we move the reverse gear from forward to reverse, we should see no movement in the valve stem here because this radius rod is following the radius of the link. So as we go from forward to reverse, you see there's no movement in the valve stem. And this needs to be the case in, in both dead centers. So we'll roll the engine forward now onto the uh, bottom dead center. And we'll do it again. And you should see no movement on the valve stem. So we've got to set it, we've got, we've set it correctly. And you can see, um, even with just a little bit of um, inaccuracy. So if we were to have the dead center off by even this couple of degrees here, um, you'll see movement in the valve stem. And similarly, if we go back to our actual dead center and say this crank is uh, rotated just a little bit off, you'll see that there is suddenly a lot of movement in the valve stem. and so even just those little adjustments can uh, really throw off your valve settings. So if you've uh, tried adjusting the crank and you are unable to um, get to that point where at dead center um, there's no movement in the valve stem in, uh, at the dead centers, um, what it probably means is that the length of your eccentric rod is incorrect. And this is something that when you build a locomotive, um, you typically make an adjustable rod that you can lengthen or shorten um, during that initial uh, valve setting. And even on full-size locomotives, this was something that was very often adjusted um, in service as the locomotive was would go through an overhaul. Um, it would be reassembled, and for any number of reasons, if the wheels were being trimmed or there was work done on the journal boxes, um, that may have changed the location of the axle, moving it forward or back just a slight amount. Um, the length of this eccentric rod would need to be uh, lengthened or shortened um, proportionally to um, make it correct. So if you uh, can't achieve the no valve movement on dead centers, um, your next step is to look at your eccentric rod and um, adjust the length there as well. The next thing to do is to set the relative location of the valve on the valve stem. So um, you can see what we've done here. We've uh, set the engine on dead center, uh, right close to it. And then we've blocked the valve gear into exactly mid-gear. And at mid-gear, uh, as you move the engine forward or backwards, there should be mo no movement coming from the link. All the motion to the valve is going to be coming only from the combination lever here. And so at dead center, um, in the mid-gear, if we look into the steam chest and look at the uh, forward port in here, um, you'll see that the valve is just barely beginning to uncover the forward port. And if we then move the engine to uh, bottom dead center, and we'll set it again here, and we'll look at the back side of the slide valve now. You should see the same thing, uh, that the uh, port is just barely uncovered by the slide valve. And what this is called here is you're setting the lead on the valve. The lead is the amount um, that the valve is open at dead center. and. Uh, you can adjust this here by, on this particular engine, 
by uh, un unclasping the valve from the stem and moving it forward or back. And the key here is that the lead um, on either dead center needs to be the same. So if it's uh, 15 thousandths of lead on this side, it needs to also be 15 thousandths of lead on this side. Um, and I think on this one we probably need to make a slight adjustment, but it's, but it's very, very close. So with that, we've now uh, set the valve on this side. And while we have the valve just open, it's worth demonstrating um, something that I think is uh, fairly common to most engineers um, that will run steam locomotives, and that is um, what happens when you adjust your cutoff, um, so-called hooking the engine up. And we'll come back here to um, our reverse gear, and we'll run roll it back to dead center. Um, now, say you're starting the train, and you put your locomotive into full forward, so the uh, radius rod on the link block is now at the bottom of the link. Now you come to your valve chest and you'll see that steam board on the front is just barely open as it should be. And as the engine starts to roll that valve, uh, that port becomes completely open. And we continue to roll forward until at, towards the end of the stroke the port becomes covered again. Now if we come back and look at where the wheels are, you'll see that we've gone through about uh, 60 to 75 percent of the stroke of the piston before the valve shut. But what happens then if we were to adjust our cutoff? So uh, we roll back to dead center, now we're running at higher speed, let's say, and you bring the reverse gear back uh, towards center. So now dead center, we see just as before the port is uh, just beginning to open, but now as we move the engine forward, we see that it doesn't open quite as much and not for as long. See, it's already closed, and if you look at the position of the wheels, now we've only gone through about 40% uh, of the uh, stroke. And what that allows to happen is for the remainder of the stroke now, um, the engine is relying on the expansive power of the steam to continue to push the piston and this increases the efficiency of the engine. It allows you to run at higher speeds and to use uh, less steam and less fuel. So with that, um, we have set the valves and um, the engine is now ready to run once we've reassembled the steam chests. Um, and I hope you found that very helpful. And uh, as you rebuild your engines and um, rebuild them for that matter, uh, hopefully this will provide you a little bit of guidance and understanding as to um, what is going on. So I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time.